Hey, this is Joe Price. We're really excited to announce that the coverage rate of the African American Families Project has just reached 99.7%. It's been a, a long journey. Lots of volunteers have helped us. We're super grateful. We're down to just that last little bit. It's about 5,000 families that are left and they're hard. So what we're really asking is if some volunteers that have advanced family history skills can help us with these final families. I'll go through some examples, but really um, we just need people that feel comfortable um, either adding a new family to the tree, uh, handling difficult cases where maybe two families are on the census together, uh, just whatever, whatever needs to be done uh, to get the family on the tree. So let me show you how you can access these families. And then I'll show a little bit about how I do it, but really I can't, I can't cover all the situations in this video. Uh, what we're really hoping is that people that feel comfortable doing difficult things in family history can take on some of these families and really do whatever it takes to make the family um, represented correctly on the family tree and attached to the census. So let me show, um, let me share my screen so you can see the sheet. So this is the Google sheet. I'll sort it by state. I, this just happened to be the way the data came out. And so um, when you want to do a family, just write your name. This just lets other people know you're working on that family and then click on this link and it'll take you uh, right here into SourceLinker. Um, and so you can see that this is a case in which we had a possible match but uh, like, as I looked at it, it just, this didn't look like a correct match. And so um, that will be your judgment call. And so if you don't think it's a match, then what you need to do is basically um, add this family to the family tree. So let me show you how to do that. Probably the easiest way to just go to um, a person page and then hit recents. And then down here at the bottom, it says add unconnected person. And what I like to do then is just bring this information over to populate these fields. And so that now we're creating a new person. And then what you can do is then take the ID for the person that you just created, come over here and hit change and just drop it into there. And then notice now that it's pointing to this new person that you just created. So we'll be adding this new family to the tree. Reason we couldn't um, add this family to the tree using our add family tools because there was a possible match that we needed someone to verify. And so that's that's what you're doing. You're looking to see if the match is correct or not. Um, not then. then at this point, what you would do is you would just add each of the family members to the tree. Um, and with the wife, I tend to leave the married name in, but you're welcome to leave that blank if you'd like. And let me just show you, um, for those that feel comfortable using Goldie Mae, I have Goldie Mae right here. And notice I need to add these other four kids to the tree. So I'm just gonna let Goldie May uh, do that. For me. So at this point now, this family is on the tree and notice it's getting connected to the census. And so now this family is gonna be represented on the family tree using the information from the census. And if you want, then you can come in here to Charlie and um, you can take a look and notice now we have some other hints showing up. And so if you want, uh, what you could do is maybe start working through some of these other hints and attaching a second source and other things. So you can see here, this is kind of cool that, um, you know, you can see all these people lining up really well, living in the exact same city. It's not clear why Jesse didn't show up in the 1910 census, but um, notice here that I can use Goldie May and Goldie May will attach that second uh, source and then it will add all the kids up until the 110 year. And really, if you want to do more with this family, you can. You, we could attach the 1930 census. We could go on Ancestry and see if maybe we could find the maiden name of Rosa. Um, maybe it's passed away, in which case we can add her. But at this point, you've, you've really done what we wanted you to do. And so then you come in here and just put a one. So that's that's how you do it. And you can you can check out as many as you feel comfortable doing. I just Let me just show you two kind of interesting cases. So here's one, and I just marked this as wife's family. Because you can see here's Judy living with her husband, William. And in fact, her father and mother in the home and also her sisters. So this is actually like a three gen family. So let me show you uh, how to do this. So again, I can use Goldie Mae. And then the really neat thing about this record is now I have a maiden name for Judy. And so I'll show you at the very end how to go and change her maiden. Notice here, we're also getting her sisters. Now, Narcissa, I'm also gonna change her last name because She's here as a under her married name. Now, notice we have all these grandkids down here. Now, grandkids are sometimes hard to connect to the family with one exception. If one of the daughters in the family has a surname that's different than the parents, then um, we can assign the grandkids the right mothers. Change. 
put it in our system now as the focus person and notice that now she's the focus person, I can actually add those kids in. So this was a really cool census record. It had three generations. It got us the maiden name of the wife. I mean, it was just really nice along many dimensions. And so this was a great record for us to do right here in uh, Source Linker. Um, and let's just, let me just show you that last thing. So her last name, we can come in here and change it to Mason. And then we can do sister. So right here, Judy. Notice that there's other census records showing up. So if you'd like to attach additional sources, you can just mark here. And then let me just show you one more case. This is a really hard one. This is a partially attached one. So you can see that like someone has already attached this and this, and then we have these other kids down here. Now, I don't know, like, so I probably what I would do is, so Mary's kind of easy because it's probably just a remarriage. Build, I think is probably the same as Philip. Now, Izell, you know, it's kind of tightly packed in here, but these two could be new kids that are added. And so this is just one where you'd want to do some research, um, you know, give John, add John having a second spouse, um, maybe see if Phil and Philip are the same person, but basically just do the research that it takes to get this family uh, completed. And again, just each time you can mark these. There's one other group I have here. Uh, so all of these will take you right into source link here. This other one, if you click on it, it will um, take you to the record. So I didn't, in our hint files, or the match files that Family Search gave us, I didn't have a hint for this person. But when we were looking at it, there's one now. So if you see, it says possible family tree match. So if I click attach to family tree, it just means you have to take an extra step. Now, this was an interesting case where I wasn't sure if Jake and Leash were the same person, though notice that Leach and Leash are, are very similar. So what I'm gonna show you, just one last thing, is just how to use Ancestry to kind of help out with this project here. And I'm gonna pull up Ancestry and I'm just gonna pull it over here to a new window. So all, all I did there was I just clicked on Ancestry and then you'd have to sign into Ancestry. And I saw this um, social security record that had you know, this unique name, Alish. Just then as I'm looking across here, I can see sometimes it's Alish, uh, Ulysses. But one thing I like to do is just go see if there's maybe a public member tree down here. So there is this public member tree that looks like a good, fantastic match. And notice it says Leash Leech Bronston. So if we come back here, then what we would actually want to do is just change Leech to touch there. Oh, and let me move Jake back in there. So notice here, now I feel really comfortable about this. Um, and notice that Fanny Phelps shows up right here, which is very close to Fanny Phipps. And so at this point now, I, I think that this is a match. And so I'm just going to let um, Goldie make And then this might be a great family where I could do a little bit more research. Now, this is great where it's saying, here's a possible match. So again, I might be able to use this record over here to just, you know, double check it. And we have a Jacob Bronson. I, I think that one looks like a pretty good um, match. And so each time then I can kind of, oops, let's bring Goldie May back. It looks like, and so what I'm, what's probably happening here is that I'm once I merge the parents, I'll be able to get all of these, but we can also just bring them in here kind of one at a time. Roy, notice each time we're getting the same two parents. Okay, so I'll probably, um, yeah, so I'll finish this family here in just a second. Um, but again, once you're done, then you just. Um, so I just want to say thanks to all of you that have been helping with the project so far. Uh, we basically went from 4% to 99% over the last couple of years, and we're really close. Uh, we think we can hit 100% here in the next few weeks, and it's really just a function of how many volunteers we can get to help us with these last few families. So, so just know we're so grateful for your work, and, and feel free to reach out to anyone you know that's good at family history that might want to help us with these last few thousand families.